All right, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about uh, really answering a question from uh, one of my uh, patrons brought up, which is what are what are editors and, and writers and other collaborators and artists, what are they looking for in a colorist? Now, obviously, that answer changes a lot depending on the project and depending on the person and and I definitely cannot speak for everyone but uh, I, I can give you a little bit of my experience on this and hopefully provide some some clarity for that answer and and again take everything with a grain of salt because you could ask 10 people this question and probably get 10 answers but I'm going to try to keep this uh, answer uh, broad enough so that it covers most situations so if anyone disagrees in the comments, I'm sure you're going to let me know. So, <laughs> but uh, so first off, uh, the the question really came from someone that was looking for a colorist, uh, and, uh, and you know what should I be looking for? Uh, and there's really three things, uh, and I guess four if you want to separate two of them out. That just about everyone's going to be looking for in a colorist, and it's really the the core of what coloring is. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys some examples here in a second. But uh, focus, clarity, mood, and depth. And I have stolen those ideas from colorists to have stolen those from other colorists, but that's really what it boils down to is are you creating focus in the right places? Are you clarifying things in the line art? Are you setting the tone? Are you setting the mood uh, in the page or in the panel you're working on? And are you creating depth? Uh, because black and white line art on its own, there are some artists that are, of course, fantastic at creating depth on their own, with line weights and shadow and everything. But coloring helps that tremendously. Okay, so first off, I want to talk about uh, focus. So, and, I, and I've talked about this in other videos. And what I mean by focus and and clarity is just are the are the elements in the page that are supposed to be your focal points, do they jump out at you? Do I have to search through the panel to look at what I'm looking for? Um, like for example, you know, when you just look at this panel or this page in black and white, you know, there are some differences in the line weights to create a little bit of separation between the background and the foreground, but once it's colored, when you've got one really uh, you know, purple and red thing happening right there in the middle of a panel that is surrounded by mostly cool and, and more desaturated colors, uh, it really comes out at you. Um, and let's see, what else have I got in here? Uh, this panel from, this was colored by Justin Ponzer. Uh, you've got this huge panel with lots of things happening and people all over the place. And of course it helps in the line art that all the characters are looking in the same place. But if you look at this in black and white, just to show you guys uh, a simpler way of looking at these values, me where's there we go so the brightest parts on the page are the two guys that are talking or the, the two characters that are talking so you've got this bright spot here next to this guy you've got Cyclops is white in his shorts or in his uh, in his outfit here so it really is some of the brightest thing on the page even even given the fact there is a character that is completely white he's still uh, not quite as bright as those points over here so even given all this rendering and everything that's going on, he's he's quickly created sort of visual shortcut to get you to look here. So when I talk about focal points and those sort of things, you know that's what I'm talking about. Um, the other thing is uh, the clarity of storytelling. So as far as things like location changes, um, I've read books before where if the colorist didn't delineate the locations with their palettes, then it, you sort of had to figure out what was happening. It's like, wait a minute, these are different people talking. Is this in the same place? Is it a different place? Uh, you know, what's going on here? So, for example, uh, this is a page from, the first page from Glitter Bomb number two, and this is taking place in a uh, therapist office, and it's all very creamy and, you know, uh, all warm and toasty colors, and it just feels very welcoming, and this office is greens and blues and these sort of things. Uh, and that's not an accident. You know, that's on purpose to get you to get comfortable in this situation. So, and I'm going to carry that over from uh, each uh, page here. Now, I'm jumping back into this blue uh, 
that you're seeing on these bottom panels because she's describing something that happened to her in the previous issue with our lead character and how mean she was to her. And, and you can see in uh, the uh, next page here, uh, whoops, sorry, let me get back to where I was. There we go. So the next page still carrying over into the same theme. I've still got my creepy blue stuff going on down here, but it gets you uh, very comfortable with what's happening on the page. So when you turn the page and see this, immediately it's like, whoa, what happened here? Something's going on. Forget the blood that's, <laughs> that's, that's laying on the floor. And that would probably catch your attention too. But that location shift and that, that color shift from one scene to the next, there is no question we are somewhere else. Something awful has happened here, you know. So um, it's kind of jarring, and it's designed to be jarring. Okay, that's that's the point. So, and for you guys that are big movie fans, I'm a huge movie fan. Start watching for color shifting in movies. You know, when you go to Mexico, it's always orange. <laughs> it's always dusty yellow orange in Mexico in American movies, even though most of Mexico is jungle, but uh, a lot of Mexico is jungle. Um, but it's sort of a visual shortcut. It's a visual trick to get you to thinking about where you are, you know. So that's what I mean when I talk about, uh, you know, uh, clarity of locations and, and storytelling and movement and all those sort of things. Um, the other thing um, is depth. Now, um, Let's see, we're going to get into some of these other pages in a second. But uh, depth, and what I mean with depth is really just atmosphere. Um, and like this is a pinup that I did a couple of years ago. And again, in the line art, it's a great piece. Um, it does look, it is sort of flat looking just because of the style of the line art and everything. But you throw some colors in there and you do some color holds and change the colors of these clouds back here. And... Uh, all of a sudden, you've got a lot of depth. You've got a lot of atmosphere in this page. Um, I had another example. I thought I had another example in here from... I did. Here's another um, uh, Justin Ponzer page. Like here, you've got all this uh, like blue shifted stuff happening in the background. You've got a lot of depth there because he's very warm up in the front very bright so it's creating a lot of depth between what's happening here and what's happening in the background uh, you know same thing here you've got the the lines back here on these clouds have been uh, lightened considerably so that these black lines in the front really pop out at you uh, and you've got even another layer of this more warm brown here in the front so that's even another layer of depth so when we talk about depth that's what we're talking about and I think a lot of colorists, I mean, this video is designed for anyone really looking for colorists and get ideas for that, but also for colorists to give them ideas of things. And I think a lot of beginner colorists think that they have to be Michelangelo with their rendering. And I, don't, I mean, Michelangelo the painter, not the Ninja Turtle. Um, and some guys are good at that. Some guys are uh, excel at that. Some of my favorite colorists are basically painting the hell out of every single page, and it's amazing to me. Uh, I was looking at this page before I got started. I'm looking at this background character back here, and the rendering is gorgeous, you know, it, just like it would be if it was in the front. And if that's your style of coloring like it is with Justin's, it's incredible. But you don't have to be that to be a good colorist. You know, it's not required. Uh, work at the level that you're comfortable with. Um, and work with what works on the line art. You know, this obviously works extremely well with this sort of line art, but to give you guys a completely different take, uh, this is from Headlopper. I think this is Mike Spicer. There's no rendering on this. I don't think there's any rendering. There might be a little bit of gradient. I mean, very, very slight in the backgrounds or something, but everything on this page is completely flat, and this page is done. And it doesn't need anything else. This page works fantastic just the way it is. There is a little bit of gradient here in this smoke. So uh, it's not completely flat, but it's really, really close. So um, this works on this line art. He's creating basically warm here where this character is and everything else is cool in the background. So you've got the same clarity. You've got the same focus that you would had he gone in here and just started, you know, painting everything the way you would, you know. Uh, some people think you have to paint everything. So, so 
coloring styles vary tremendously from book to book and whatever your style is or if you work in multiple styles so like I said earlier just make sure the rendering fits the line art um, I, I, this is what I own glitter bomb it's it's very simply colored it's not super rendered there's a little bit of rendering in it but it's not very complicated because that's what that that's what fit that line art uh, and that's very different from the way that I colored uh, or the way I'm currently coloring this Cyberforce book where it's more of a cartoony uh, line art so I kind of went with a more almost like uh, Japanese uh, uh, manga anime style uh, coloring on it but um, it just depends on whatever your line art is and what the needs of the story are is really going to determine how you should be rendering things so so anyway, I, I know I've c covered a lot of ground in this short video and, and, and probably flew through some things. And if, I, if anything slipped past you or if you have more questions, you know, use the comment section uh, down there at the bottom to ask. And I, will, I try to answer every single comment if it, uh, if it makes sense anyway. Um, and um, for those of you that are in my coloring course already, I've just added two new videos. Uh, so you guys have access to that automatically and if you haven't signed up for the course or if you haven't checked it out there's a free trial get in there and you can look at a couple of videos at, at no charge and and see what else is in there and um, but yeah check that out there are links in the description um, also I've got a patreon account that is pretty new so uh, if you haven't checked that out there are links to that in the description as well and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this and give me a thumbs up if you like the video I think I've covered all of the standard end of the video YouTube things to say. So I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.